It generally we waste our lives distracted from our two selves in endless activity. Our lives are lived in intense and anxious struggle, in a swirl of speed and aggression, and our minds cannot stay st still for longer than a few moments without grasping up to distraction. We have also overindulged in thinking. Whatever thoughts and emotions rise, we let them sweep us away and off into a spiral of stories and illusions which we take so seriously that we end up not only believing, but becoming as well. We are fragmented into so many different aspects that we don't know who the hell we are or who the heaven we are and what aspect of ourselves we should identify ourselves or believe in. We are always seeking, looking to find ourselves outside of ourselves, as one great master put it. It's like as if you leave the elephant at home and look for its footprints in the forest. So many contradictory voices, the dictates and feelings fight over, control over inner lives, that we find ourselves scattered everywhere in all directions, leaving nobody at home. But regardless of who we are, the main purpose of life, we could call it the heart of being human, is to be happy. It is what we all wish, what we are all seeking knowingly or unknowingly for a lasting, happiness that free from suffering. Now here, you see, whenever His Holiness of Dalai Lama is asked by people how to be happy, they ask him, what's the art of happiness? How to be fine? How to be happy? You understand? And I heard him many times respond in the same way. And that is that granted that external situations and circumstances to do a certain extent contribute towards one's happiness and suffering, but fundamentally happiness and suffering depend upon the mind and the heart how the mind perceived through the five senses. Is that clear? And what's happened with us now, for example, is that really we've kind of lost ourselves. We've gone away from ourselves. The main advice for this life, the main teaching for this life is that, that the problem with us, the teachings say, that we've lost our mind and into projections. You understand? That we have to purify our perception, our projection of the mind, and realize the, the essence of the mind, nature of mind. Because mind has two aspects. There's an appearance aspect of mind, and there is the essence or the nature, the essence of mind and the appearance of mind. You understand? The appearance of mind is all the thoughts and emotions, that's the appearance of mind. And the essence of mind is the, really the nature of mind. The trouble with us is we only know the appearance of mind, lost in the appearance, the projection, and you understand? And we have no idea of the nature of mind itself. Just as always, we're so much out there, <laughs> too much out there, you know, just out there, that we are always doing, speaking, thinking, that we've lost the sense of being. And in fact, we've lost connection from ourselves. We are split into so many aspects of ourselves, as said in the introduction. So much so that one great master put it, that the samsara, I don't know whether how many of you understand the meaning of it. That actually samsara, is a Sanskrit word, ancient Sanskrit, which is like the Latin of the, the East, you know, of the, in that it means, in Tibetan, Konkorva, means the, 
the kind of the cyclic existence, cyclic existence, which is determined by what? Because from ignorance, negative emotions, negative karma or negative action result in suffering. The cyclic existence, birth and death, carried by suffering. That's what samsara is. And often in samsara, what really happens is that, you see, even though we want happiness, we really, how do you say, uh, we actually completely kind of run away from those real causes which bring happiness as our worst enemy. Do you understand? Even though we want happiness, that we run away from the real causes of happiness, which we consider like our worst enemy. Whereas even though we want, don't want suffering, we run head along. <laughs> Says one great master called Shanti Deva. He said that. In the ignorant beings, you see, that, uh, that you know, the, the cause of suffering, they just think it's like the worst enemy and avoid it. Whereas that like suffering, they just kind of, you know, run after head along. So therefore, our aim and our actions are gone completely contrary to each other. Like a blind leading a blind. As one great master called it, that the samsara is mind turned outwardly lost in its projection. That's what samsara is. Whereas in nirvana, which, is the, which means the cessation of suffering, which is the, the, the which is the state of uh, liberation, the state of ultimate peace, or you can call it the state of enlightenment, the nirvana, is in fact, nirvana on the other hand is mind turned inwardly recognizing nature. So that samsara is mind turned outwardly, loss in projection, whereas nirvana is mind turned inwardly recognizing to nature. In fact, often great masters say the difference between samsara and nirvana is just mind and outwardly, oh, mind turned inwardly. You understand? Now, when you say mind turned inwardly, it's not like, like you know, introverted way. You, if you're just introvertedly kind of going around, that's also extroverted, but in an introverted way. <laughs> but when I mean is the turn to recognize one's nature. Is that clear? Because at the moment you see the situation such that we're so much just out there doing things in action that we have no awareness of the actor, the doer. In fact, in the spiritual path, in meditation, the first step is called mindfulness, which is the opposite of distraction, opposite of mindlessness is that state is when suddenly when you turn your mind inwardly and begin to recognize the actor, the doer, begin to have some self-awareness of oneself, is the beginning of that process of mindfulness. You understand? In fact, mindfulness begins first before one can actually begin the meditation. 